I'm Joe Leo. Let's play with some trains. 1880 China is a railway building and stock market game for three to seven players. A set of simple mechanisms forms the basis of 1880 China. You use yellow, green, brown, and gray towels to create a railway network. Companies buy trains and service small towns and cities to generate revenue. This revenue earns money for the company and its shareholders. 1880 China Setup Arrange the boards on the table as convenient. This setup shows the components from the Double O Games production of 1880. According to the forums on Board Game Geek, it will get a reprint by Lookout Games in October. All we have right now is the proposed box cover. Continuing with setup. One player is chosen to be the banker. There should be sufficient space to lay out the bank's money and other components. The starting capital varies. For a four-player game, it is 480 yuan. Next, the private companies, shares of companies, train building permits are laid out in their assigned places. The companies that are available for players to purchase are called share companies. They are stacked on this board in a particular order. First, place a stack of five 10% shares. Then, the capitalization card followed by three more 10% shares. Finally, add the three director's shares. When a company is floated, it will be decided which director's certificate is needed and then adjust the 10% shares to total 100%. Place the towels near the map so everyone can see what track is available. I use jewelry trays to allow passing it around the table. One number card randomly to each player. This is the temporary turn order for the auction. The lowest number is the priority player. Everyone sits in numerical order from the priority player. Seating order will change after the initial auction, so don't get too comfortable. The initial auction. There are eight private companies, numbered from 0 to 7, that provides players with special powers. Unlike most 18xx games, these privates cannot be bought by the share companies, and the power belongs to the player. In most cases, it is applicable to all of that player's companies. Let's look at the privates in detail before describing the auction. P0 has a minimum bid of 5 UN and no income. It pays the owner 40 when the last 2 plus 2 train is bought, 70 when the last 3 train is bought, or 100 UN when the last 3 plus 3 train is purchased. P1 has a minimum bid of 10 UN and pays 5 UN income at the start of each operating round. It has no special power. P2 has a minimum bid of 25 UN and an income of 10 and allows the owner to use all ferries free of charge for all of his companies. The ferries are pre-printed track shown as the dashed line and normally cost the company 10 UN per ferry used. Taiwan off-board location is normally worth 30 during yellow and green phases and no value following the start of the brown phase. The private P3 increases the value of Taiwan by 20 UN with all of his companies for the entire game. It has a minimum bid of 45 and an income of 15 UN per OR. The Chinese River Ferry Companies, P4, reduces the cost of river hexes by 20 UN for all of his companies. Note that this makes normal river hexes free and the mountain river hexes will cost 20 less. The minimum bid is 70 and its income is 20. P5, with a minimum bid of 100, and 25 UN income provides a building permit for one company during phase D. We will discuss the importance of building permits during the track laying segment. For a minimum bid of 160 with no income, you can own the BCR. This private gives you the 20% director share part at 100. The BCR is able to build two yellow tiles per turn. The Rocket of China, P7, is the last private. It requires a minimum bid of 50 UN and provides no income. The player owning this private 
may exchange it for the next available train during the operation of a company. This must be completed before the four trains are broken. If the first four train is bought before this is traded in, it is immediately traded in for the second four train. The private companies are auctioned off in sequence. The priority player starts the auction with P0. He may bid or pass. The minimum bid is face value of the private. Each player bids in five yuan increments until no player wishes to bid higher. The winner pays the bank and the auction continues with the next private. Once a player passes on a private, they may not re-enter the bidding. The next private auction is started by the player to the left. This continues until all of the privates have been sold. Seating order is re-established after all the privates are sold. The player with the least money becomes a priority player. The rest of the players sit clockwise in ascending money order. The foreign investors. After the auction, each player may, at no cost, choose one of the seven foreign investors. The four investors not selected are removed from the game. The four investors run each operating round in numerical order immediately after the payment of private revenue. Each start in a designated spot on the map. Russia starts in the northwest corner. <clears throat> Japan, number two, is on the east coast. Belgium is located in the center. Germany, number four, is just south of Japan. British, Portuguese, and the French start along the south edge of the map. They operate like normal companies, except the following. They can only build or upgrade one cow per turn. They do not buy trains. They lease the current train from a bank each run. Investors do not need building permits. They do not have shares, and income earned is always retained by the foreign investor. As soon as the owning player founds his first company, one share of this company is placed on the charter of the foreign investor. This share is reserved for the owner of the foreign investor. As soon as the two railways have at their disposal a joint network, the foreign investor is joined to the normal company. The owner of the foreign investor chooses what to do with the capital acquired. It can go wholly into the treasury of the normal company, or the owner takes 20% for himself. The remaining 80% goes to the bank. The company may take over the station marker of the foreign investor. This is free of charge. Just replace it with the lowest cost station marker. The owner gets the share and a $50 UN takeover bonus. I hear the conductor. That means it's time to go. If you enjoyed the video, leave me a like and a comment. Until next time, have fun training.